Good evening, Freedom in Christ Church family. We're back at it again. Here we are uh, coming online and uh, going to do it this way just for a little bit, uh, uh, just until we feel the go ahead to get back together. Um, there is uh, an outbreak of uh, COVID in this area and uh, uh, we just want to be safe and have the abundance of caution, do the right thing. And so um, we're glad you could join us. And uh, we know that uh, um, God will bless us as we come together and um, just enjoy one another's company. And um, I have with me again, Leslie. Leslie uh, did a great job last time. And um, Leslie has been with me uh, from after a month. I think it was a month that I got to the church as a pastor and then Leslie came into the church and, and then we've been together pretty much um, since then. So um, this is typically how Leslie and I are together when I'm not on the pulpit, we minister together. And so a lot of times she'll finish my sentences and uh, sometimes I'll, I'll be thinking about something that I wanna say and then I'm not sure if I should say it. And I usually know if I should say it or if it was from the Lord because Leslie will say it. And so I'm glad that she's here and um, I'll let you say a few words, Leslie. Happy Thanksgiving. Welcome, everybody. It's so good um, to be here together with you. We're looking forward to tonight's message. Yes, you know, and for this Thanksgiving, um, I think it's important that we all um, pray and thank God for this beautiful country that he has given to us. Um, Thanksgiving was established to give God thanks for this beautiful, beautiful country. And we know that uh, 2020 hasn't been a, a very good year for many of us and uh, um, for the whole country. But you know what? This year is going to go and we're going to go into a brand new, better year. But it's important that we remain thankful no matter what we go through, no matter what's happening, because it will move the hand of God as we stay thankful. And I believe that as we are thankful and praise him and don't let the devil steal our joy or, or our gratefulness, um, God's hand will move and we are believing that he will um, expose the darkness that's out yes. there and the corruptness and that everything hidden will be revealed in Jesus name. We are believing that righteousness will rule in this nation and that the hearts of the people will turn back to their father. And so that's what we're believing for. So remember to remain thankful and uh, we are living in the most blessed country that there was ever created. We'd like to um, pray at this time over your needs, and um, it's important that a church prays. A church that uh, prays together stays together. And so um, over many, many years, I've seen God do great, great miracles through this corporate prayer. This is a corporate prayer right now. It doesn't matter that we're not in the same place. God hears our prayer. Um, time and distance and separation this type it can't it can't uh, make us not the body of Christ and make us not effective this is just another mode that we're blessed to be able to to get things done and so I want you to think about your need because we're going to pray a prayer and you claim it and God's going to do it in Jesus name and so uh, James five sixteen says pray ye one for another that ye may be healed the sincere, heartfelt prayers of a righteous man has dynamic power. And Philippians 2, 9 through 11 says, God has highly exalted Jesus. The name of Jesus is the name above all names, and every knee must bow. Every knee must bow yep. to the name of Jesus. Not some knees, not most every knee, <laughs> not every knee but one. No, every knee yes. must bow to the name of Jesus, which the Father has exalted above all other names. That's our name. Jesus said, in my name, we'll cast out devils and we'll lay hands on the sick and they'll recover. He also said something very powerful Jesus did in John 14, 12 through 14. He says, verily, verily, I say unto you, he that believeth on me, the works that I do, shall he do also and greater works than these shall he do, because I go unto my Father. In verse 13, And whatsoever ye shall ask in my name, that will I do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If ye ask anything in my name, I will do it. 
anything. Once again, he didn't say if you ask some things. Now we know what we ask for must be in line with God's world will. So healing is in line with God's will. We know that deliverance, um, all anything that has to do with um, your betterment, uh, spirit, soul, or body. If you're suffering with depression or fear or anxiety, if there's sickness, anything like that, it, it's God's will that we be healed. And so, but I, I wanted just to, before we pray, when it says, Jesus said, ask anything in my name, I just, I want to just give it just a quick lesson. Ask is the Greek word, and it means this, a demand of something due. Jesus was talking about using his name as a basis for authority to demand our rightful inheritance in Christ. Now, I know what some of you might be thinking. We don't demand God. That would be foolish. God's already given us everything pertaining to godliness and, and, and every, all of our spiritual provisions were provided for us 2,000 years ago in the redemptive work of Christ. But what he's saying is that when we pray and we go to the Father, we are to exercise and stand up in the name of Jesus and demand that Satan cease and desist in his operation against us or our church family, which we're going to do, and call him off of assignment. We are to demand it. That's what it means to, to ask in this scripture. Look it up. You can look it up if you have a Strong's. The New Testament is written in the Greek, and in the Strong's, ask means to demand of something due. We don't demand the Father but we demand Satan, do we not? God loves it when you stand up and, and take control and take authority over the situation. You must do that. And we're gonna talk about this here in, in our lesson, how to take authority. But, but this is a prayer that we're gonna pray. We have a right to use the name of Jesus. When sickness or disease tries to attack you, you can demand in the name of Jesus that it leaves your body. You can demand it in the name of Jesus. And I tell you what, we, we all go through tests and trials and struggles in this world because that's the kind of world we live in. But I tell you what, when we get attacked by things, we deny it's right to be there. And we're not happy about it. And we don't sit down and say, oh, well, and tell everybody how bad our life is and, and say, well, this belongs to me. This is my this or my that. No, it, we don't want it. Right. And so we know where it came from. John 10.10, 10, Jesus said, the thief kills, steals, and destroys. I have come that you might have life and have it more abundantly. Mm -hmm. Jesus died on the cross to, so that we might be healed. And, and not only forgiven of sins, but to be healed. By his stripes, we were healed. And so we are going to come against it as a church family. And so you got your request to be known. And, and in this request, too, we're going to pray for our whole church family. Complete wholeness and soundness and, yes. and spirit, soul, and body, and mind in every area. We're going to take authority right now right now in the name of Jesus. So let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we take authority over sickness. We take authority over disease. Yes. We take authority over all the work of the devil. We take authority over all viruses and yes. all cancers and all tumors and all depressions and all um, fear and anxiety yes. and all the works of the curse Everything that's under the curse, we, yes. we take authority over it because Galatians 3.13 says Jesus has redeemed us from the curse. And we know who we are in Christ, so we're going right. to walk in it. And so Satan, we command you to cease and desist yes. and stop your working in our bodies and in our church body and in, in anyone else or whatever request is going on right there. We identify you as the enemy. We identify you as, as the one that is to be the target of our aggression. Yes. And so with a righteous indignation, with a, a sense of, of pride and a sense of belonging and, and, a, and just a gratitude in our heart, we stand on the authority of that precious, precious name. Yes. How sweet is the name above all names. When all else fails, the name of Jesus will never fail. And I thank you, Lord. We lift up Jesus right now. Jesus, thank you. Thank you for giving us that name. And it's in your name that we claim and we believe and we, we uh, accept and receive our healing. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Amen.
so be it. You can take that to the bank. Sometimes people say, well, that was a good prayer and all, but Pastor John, but, but I don't feel it. Well, there you go again, going by feelings. You know, we're not moved by what we see. We're not moved by what we feel. We're only moved by what the word of God says. And we know as we continue to stand on God's word, circumstances have to move and, and break and, and, and deliverance comes our way. That's why the Bible says fight the good fight of faith. He didn't say just sit down after you became a Christian and do nothing and, and you're in a, a happy la-la land. No, he said fight because we need to fight. And the Bible says after having done all to stand, stand. Yes. We are not to be quitters. God right. is the God of the finish line. And I tell you one thing, if you're running a race, the only way that you will not finish that race in the kingdom of God is if you quit. God will get you through every time. So don't you get discouraged. And, and we're going to go into that here in my message about how to overcome adversity. I think um, 2020, when it goes down in the annals of, of time, I think it, it will be called the year of adversity. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> I think it'll be known as, as a time where um, we were challenged on every front. But guess what? We're going through. Yes, Here we are. we are, still praising the name of Jesus. Here we are, a still a church family. We love each other. Our calling is just as real and strong as it was in the beginning 42 years ago. And we will finish. We will finish the race. And, and someday soon, Jesus is coming back. Yep. How long do you reckon we have till Jesus comes back? You got any? Well, I have no idea, but I'm ready when he's ready. No, I know you're ready too, <laughs> but what a day that'll be. Yes. What a day that'll be. You, you might say, well, I don't know if I'm ready to meet Jesus yet. All you need to do is ask him into your heart. I used to say that. You used to say that? Yep. Do you worry about that now? Nope, I don't. I know my name's written in the Lamb's Book of Life. Her name's written there? Did, did, you, did you do something um, fabulous to uh, earn that? Nope, all I did was accept Jesus. All we all do, we yep. accept Jesus and he, it's easy. he comes in. I know you've probably heard this said before, and we weren't, we didn't feel, we weren't prepared to say this, but I'm going to follow the Holy Spirit. That you probably, probably have heard this before, but if you were the only one on the earth, Jesus would have came and died just for you. Yep. Because you are wonderfully and fearfully made. I believe right now by the Spirit of God that I'm talking to someone this just today. Just today you wondered your worth. Just today you wondered if, if God was ever going to use you. Just today you, you, you looked at your current circumstance and your situation and you got discouraged. And, and I believe that's why the Lord would have you tune in today because we got an answer for that. But I want to tell you, you are very valuable. And God does have a plan for your life. And he has just put it in my heart to tell you that. He loves you. He loves you. He loves you. So get those negative thoughts out of your head and start rejoicing in who you are. It's a woman too. It's a woman. Start rejoicing in who you are as a daughter of Christ. Because you are a daughter of the Most High God. That's right. Amen. And so I want to, of course, we always do our scriptures, overcoming adversity. Let, let's pray over this, this scripture. This sermon. Father, I thank you, Lord, for Leslie and myself. These words that we speak will be the hammer that breaks the rock into pieces, Lord. This word will come out of our spirit, up through our mouths, Lord God, and it'll go into the hearts of the hearer, and nothing Satan can do can stop it. That's right. This word will minister to each person listening, whether they are listening now or yes. later. Yes. It will minister to their heart just what they need. And we thank you for it now. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. I tell you what, I'm really excited about this message. Uh, John 16, 33, Jesus says, In this world you will have tribulation or adversity, but be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. So Jesus said, we're going we're gonna to have tribulations. I, I have to, I'll just test this out on Leslie. Leslie's been saved how long now? It's been... Um, oh, 15 years. 15 years. Okay. 
Great, best day of your life, right? Yes. Okay, best years of your life? Yes. Okay, in that 15 years, is it correct that Jesus, what Jesus says that you will have tribulation or adversity? Have you had any tests, trials, or tribulations? Yes. Have you had times where it seemed like it was going to even break you? Definitely. Okay, well. And actually, I got to say, it's been 17 years. I was off 17 years. I've been you with my man years. for two years. Okay. Married. Yeah. So, yes, I got All right. saved prior. So, you have had times like that? I have. I have too. So, it turns out that the Word of God is true. I'm telling you what, there's an old country song. Um, if someone knows it, they can put it up on the screen there. Um, I never promised you a rose garden. <laughs> Amen. So, we, we have a rose garden in our heart. God downloaded everything inside of us. The kingdom of God is within inside of us. And together we are the body of Christ, freedom in Christ. We are the local body. And we have, we have tremendous power. But man, you got to fight. You got to believe God and don't let the devil pick on you and torment you and, and continue to do what God called you to do. And you will get through. And so there's two scriptures here in, in Romans 8, 37. Is he, you want me to read these? Sure, I can do it. Okay. It says, Nay, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. And 2 Corinthians 2.14 says, Now thanks be to God who always leads us in triumph in Christ. Amen. You know, I like how the Bible uses these, I call them power words. You see how it says we're more than conquerors. conquerors yes. Hey, how about this? Not just conquerors. More. more. <laughs> Whatever that is, <laughs> that's you. You are more than a conqueror. A conqueror is pretty, pretty big deal. Yes. But you are more than a conqueror through Jesus. Everything you have is because of who you are in Christ, who you are as a child of God. You are more than a conqueror. And then it says that Christ always leads us. Here's another power word to triumph. triumph. Everybody likes to triumph. Now, the word triumph in the dictionary means a uh, victorious or a, a conquest, a victorious or a conquest. So I was thinking about um, here uh, about Leslie and my, my life together. We played a lot of sports together and we've been on a lot of winning teams. We've won a lot of, of, of battles, a lot of contests, but we would not have triumphed. We would not have been the victor. We would not have conquered if we did not. Enter the arena if we did not participate. Right. And so you are participating, whether you like it or not. You are in the arena. You know what this arena you are in as a child of God? You, you are living in a fallen world, but I'll let Leslie finish the rest of it. You're living in a fallen world. But you serve a risen Savior. That's the arena. That's the arena, and you triumph in Christ. Christ. And yes. so you got to get out there and realize that you're in a battle. You're going to face adversity. Don't, don't be surprised when adversity <clears throat> comes your way. You know, someone once said, well, a new, a new level, a new devil. Well, that might be true. So are you going to stay in the old level all your life because there's a new devil over there? Or are you going to say, well, I don't care how big the giant is or how big the devil is. I'm going to keep following God's will for my life. And I'm going to keep growing and maturing and developing and keep being used by God to change lives. Because I tell you what, this world needs some warriors. The world needs people that are unashamed, that will talk the truth, even in a dark time that we live in right now. And this is the perfect time to stand up and be on the offense, not the defense. Especially when these things are coming your way and they're trying to hit you from the right and the left. It's just time to get get on the offense, you know. Get into the Word of God. Find out those scriptures, you know, that works and works for you. Because everybody has their favorite scriptures, their go-to scriptures that they go to. So I say it's definitely time to stand up and be on the offense. That's right. You know, I admire that in Leslie. Um, when we golf together, that's the one thing that we do. That's where we spend our free time. If we have free time, we try to get out and golf. And um, we're very competitive. And uh, well, actually, Leslie is. I mean, <laughs> well, just, is it my, am I right? Yeah, well, you are too. <laughs> I try to be. 
but you're you just know, on the other side. Yeah, <laughs> I'm, I'm not on the triumphant side too much, but that, that's a whole other story. <laughs> but I want to tell you, I admire Leslie that when it's time to golf, she's got her game face on. <laughs> she is ready. She's swinging her club and she's getting ready. She even puts a ball in her pocket <laughs> before we leave the house to warm the ball up. That's right. I mean, and I'm like, you know, hey, let's just go out. And, and I don't even take any practice swings. But you know what? It costs me. It, because Dearly. before I know it, <laughs> if she's not nice to me and give me a mulligan, I'll be hitting three or four off the tee. You know, I'll be way off three or five or whatever it is. I'll be way, I'll, I'll lose on the first hole sometimes. And so, but I've learned from her to, hey, get ready. You know, if, if she wants to compete, let's compete. Let's, let's, let's do this. And I've learned to enjoy that. Now it's all in good fun. Yeah. If, if she wins, it's great. If I win, she, she congratulates me and, yep. and uh, we just go home. But, but, you know, I did learn from Leslie that, that she prepares and, and, and she, she likes the battle. She <laughs> likes the competition. And we should not shy away from what's happening right now. That's right. We are living in a troubled time. But I tell you what, the early church had to put up with Nero. And Nero was pretty vicious. And so mm. we ain't got nothing like that. But, I, but we are, we are, it's a very significant time that we are living in. Yes. And so don't, don't be depressed about it. Understand the season that we are in. And decide that you're going to make a difference. And God will use you, I promise you that. This is a spiritual battle. There's no doubt about it, what's going on right now. So mm -hmm. we, don't, we don't fight things the fleshly way. We, we got to get into the spirit and into the meat of the word and start just calling things out in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. So people, they often focus too much on their problems. And when this happens, Jesus said it causes men's hearts to fail them for fear. If you focus on the problem, or if you take yourself outside of who you are in Christ and look at your own strength, your own might, your own abilities, you're going to, you're going to falter. And Jesus said that your heart will fail you for fear or discouragement or things like that. Don't let that happen. Don't you dare. You take your mind off of the promise and off of the problem and put it on the word of God. Never take your mind off the promise. Yeah, I made a note here. You don't want to be the one at the Red Sea trying to get the others in disbelief. You want to be the one that's saying, come on, we got this. The battle belongs to the Lord. And you know what? He said it. He spoke it. And so we're trusting that word and believing in that word. And, and we're going to take this land. We're going to be mm -hmm. the possessors of this land. Are you hearing that, Freedom in Christ Jesus. Church? Are you hearing that? You get up in your living rooms and you start praising God and yes. thanking him. The devil can do nothing with a, a praising Christian. That's right. He can't do nothing with that. He, there's, no, there's nothing he can do. So in the middle of adversity, get up and laugh and, and rejoice and, and shout at the top of your lungs, I am triumphant in Christ. Yes. I am the Man. victor. I'm not moved by what I see. That's I'm not moved right. by what I feel. I'm only moved by what the Word of God says. Yes. This, is, this is our life. This is what we got. I believe with all of my heart that God's Word is true. Yes. I believe. I believe. I believe that His Word is true. Even when circumstances look like the Word of God isn't working, I don't go by that. I go by the truth of God's Word. And I hang in there. And I trust in my God. And He delivers. He's been yes. delivering me for 55 years. And I don't see any reason why. He won't keep delivering me. That's right, amen. The very fact that I even became a pastor is a miracle in, in its own right. And uh, Leslie and I are a miracle. God yes. brought us together. God brought us together. People say, well, God's not a matchmaker, and God does, well, he matched us. Yes, he did. <laughs> I know that was God. And so um, God will do anything. Just don't, just, just don't quit and get, and get discouraged. Discouragement is, is something that the devil will send your way. And what he does with discouragement is he takes the attention off of what God's will is for your life and mm -hmm. what we are to be doing for God. You say, what am I supposed to be doing for God? You're supposed to be the light. Yeah. You're supposed to be the salt. 
You're supposed to be the one that goes out there and lets the love of God shine through you and, and walk in your giftings and your abilities and, and be Christ-like and Christ-centered. And so when- And be the cheerleader for the rest of the gang. Yes, yes. But, we encourage one another. Right, that's what we're supposed to do. But when discouragement comes, mm -hmm. and I'll be the first to say, I've been discouraged before. I know what discouragement is. I've been discouraged recently. I'll be, I'll be transparent. You know, it's no shame in being discouraged. No. Nope. Yeah, I just want to stop here for a second. If you're a born again believer, it doesn't mean that you become a machine or a robot and, and you don't ever have none of these feelings. These feelings come, but the wrong feelings, they got to go. Yes. So they come and they go, right? You recognize them. And then if they're not of God, and if it's a feeling like discouragement, you got to get it out of there. So it right. takes your attention off of God's will for your life, and it puts everything on your attention on what has happened to you or what is yeah. happening to mm -hmm. you. And the devil uses it as a tool to bring you down. And, and uh, um, the person that I, I was talking about, earlier that the Lord gave me a word for you you know exactly what I'm talking about I mean I want to tell you the devil's a talker mm -hmm. but I just want you to know if you're listening to him you're listening to a liar that's all right because no matter what he's telling you it's contradicting the word of God yes, definitely. and you're gonna to have to get up on your feet and pull yourself up by your bootstraps and you're gonna to have to look in the mirror and say I am a mighty woman of God I am a mighty moving force and nothing's going to stop me from glorifying my God. You can do it. You can do it. People do it every day. Thousands, hundreds, millions yeah. of people do it every day. You, you, you can do it too. And you know what I've found out a few times? There's been times where, you know, I've been bummed out and discouraged about something. And this is the importance of being a part of a local church. Honestly, I get these messages just out of the clear blue from one of my sisters or brothers, you know, in the Lord. And they'll just send me, hey, I was just thinking about you today. I mean, how yes. awesome is that? You know, and because God can use us, we're all willing vessels, you know, so he can use us like that. And we encourage one another. It is so important to be hooked up in a local church. I mean, I love my church family. You guys are awesome. Yes. And like, I miss you guys. I miss your faces right in front of me, you know, but I know that you're there. I see you. I see your comments yes. there. Hi, everybody. We love you guys. And um, we've been praying for everybody. So I'm just letting you know. I mean, it's just cool that we can encourage one another. You know, when when we get bummed out, bummed out or whatever, we're supposed to take up one another's burdens and bring it to the Lord and just ask him, you know, for peace to flood in there. And, and God does. I mean, he just, he works out all those details. And so, I mean, he's like right beside me. So I, I, I have, you know, mm -hmm. the right, the clear direction, the, the connection is like right there. I'm just happen to be a little bit luckier. I guess sometimes I think of it because if I get bummed out, I can just go to my honey and, and let him know what I'm doing, you know, what I'm thinking about. And then he can remind me that I might be thinking about that for too long or I might be watching something too long. I will tell you over the last week or so, I've really cut back on my news watching because it was mm -hmm. bumming me out. Mm -hmm. And you know what? And I've been watching these other things and we've been talking and watching Flashpoint and I'm getting excited over that stuff. You know, it got me built back up again, got my mind focused again, you know, and, and reading the word and just getting that into me. So I'm just saying, you just got to, sometimes you just got to refocus because you can't stay down in the ditch Amen. for long. Amen. And I like what Leslie said there. I believe that was straight from the Holy Spirit. When you are getting discouraged, go ahead and be an encourager. Yeah. That's a remedy for discouragement. Go ahead and teach your body who's in control. Yes. Go ahead and step up and step out and say, you know what, Mr. Devil, I know what you're trying to do. So I'm going to call three people in my <laughs> church. And I'm. you don't have to be on the phone for hours. You can right. if you want to. But, you know, if they want you to. But you can call three people and you can just say, look, I, and just pray about it because they'll come up in your heart. Mm -hmm. and, and you love the people in the church. And you can call them and say, look, I was just thinking about you. Um, I think you're awesome. Yeah. And I just want, I want to tell you that, that I, I appreciate your singing. I appreciate, I appreciate your preaching. I appreciate your friendship. 
I appreciate the way you usher. I appreciate these things about you. See, you won't be discouraged long. I promise you. And if you get discouraged in the middle of adversity, please, please hear me out on this. You got, you got a minute? <laughs> Just one minute here. Just a quick minute. I know you have a minute. Do not call that same old person you talk to all the time that you might talk to that doesn't know anything about the Word of God. You, and their religion is a little mm -hmm. bit of Dr. Phil, a little bit of Oprah, a little bit of what Grandma used to say, and it's a hodgepodge of all kinds of stuff, and, and they're always adding to the misery. <laughs> you got to find yourself someone who will snap you out of it. You can call me, call Leslie. Now, we will not diminish or lessen what you're going through, but we will not let you stay there. Right. I'm not good at throwing pity parties. <laughs> Me either. Yeah. I lived a pity party life, and I am tired of it. It's like someone who ate hot dogs all their life. And uh, what's that one thing I, I don't like? I don't like uh, mushroom macaroni. <laughs> I like a lot of food, but there's one food I do not like, mushroom macaroni. And cream and mushroom soup. Yep. You know why? Because my babysitter fed me to that every day one summer. Mushroom macaroni. And to this day, when I, I smell it or see it, I'm like, uh, I don't need nothing like that in my life. You know? <laughs> and so that's the way I am with pity parties. I'm done with them. All I did was walked around and felt sorry for myself, and everybody felt sorry for me. And then one day, I said to the Lord, I remember it like it was yesterday. I said, Lord, when is the day going to come when I can be the one helping people instead of being the one that always needs help? And, and you can come to that place too. And you know what he told me? Well, get up and start, start helping people then. And when I started helping people, in my mind, I wasn't qualified to help anybody. Sometimes people think, well, I got all these problems. I got all these issues. How can I help someone? See, you're listening to the wrong voice there. That's a discouraging voice. You just get yeah. up in the name of Jesus and say, Father, I want to bless someone and I'm going to do it. And God will use you and you won't be discouraged long. I promise you that. That's right. So we're talking about discouragement. The number one thing that you must do is, is um, meditate in the word. Meditate in the word of God. Remember this. God's word changes circumstances. Circumstances do not change God's word. That's right. And no matter what adversity you're going through, we're going through adversity right now, and this community and all this stuff going on here and all this, this, all this stuff, it will never change who we are as sons and daughters of the Most High God, does it? That's right. No. It will never change the word of God. It will never change who we are in Christ. I remember when I was a kid, um, I, I lived in a rough neighborhood, and there was a trailer park right across the road there, and I have a claim to fame that uh, <laughs> I got kicked out of there. My, one of my infamous stories, I actually got kicked out and, uh, um, until my dad went over there and got me reinstated real quick. I don't, know ever, I don't really know what happened, but I got reinstated. But anyway, but there's a lot of um, kids that were just uh, didn't act right, bullies. And uh, one day, this snowy day, it was a snow day, and I was out with some friends, and uh, some of these older teenagers were there. I was maybe nine, eight or nine, and, and there's an older teenager there. His name was Bull. That was his name, Bull. He might have been um, 15, 16. There's a quite a bit of development between a nine-year-old and a 15 or 16-year-old, right? Well, anyway, he sees me. And he, he runs me down, and I, I was pretty fast, but he's, you know, he's a teenager, and I'm not even a teenager yet, and he catches me. And he rubs my face in the snow. Just kept rubbing my face in the snow. And it, I still remember it. It's not fun to um, be helpless to some, a human being that's more powerful than you. No. And, uh, he, I mean, he had his fun with me, and then he got up, and he's laughing, and, and he's walking away. All of a sudden, I got a uh, uh, <laughs> anger in me. I was a wise young boy. Because you know what I told him? I said, you got the better of me now because you're older. But one day, I'm going to grow up. And when I grow up, I am going to remember that you did this. Mm -hmm. And then I ran home and he couldn't catch me because I waited till he got 
far enough away when I said that. Well, this guy was a little older, like I said, juvenile delinquent, if you will, and didn't see much of him. He went off to all kinds of places and got into trouble. And, and uh, well, fast forward maybe um, 15 years. I'm in at the old Shoemaker Sporting Goods store. Many of you know where that's at. And uh, um, um, I'm, I'm buying some shells, shotgun shells, I think. And guess who's standing at the counter? Bull. All these years later, he looked the same to me, just a little older version. And at and, and this time, I'm a young 20-something buff guy. That's right. You might not believe it now looking at me, but <laughs> I worked in the tree service. And I lifted logs for a living. And I had him by 20 pounds. Easy. And, and I mean, he, he was just a little guy. And, and I looked at him, and I thought, hmm, boo. And everything flashed back into my mind. Everything. I, I got a good memory. You talk about a memory of an elephant? <laughs> good thing I'm a good forgiver. <laughs> and, and I thought, I ought to go over there right now. Because trust me, what he did to me, I could have done to him. Because I, I grew. I grew, just like I said I would. But then the conviction of the Lord, thankfully, got into me. And I thought, no, I'm going to let that go. I'm going to let that go. It's not worth it. But, you know, I, I grew up physically. You are going to grow up spiritually. The Bible talks about spiritual growth. You keep learning who you are. You keep learning the verses. You keep learning to identify the enemy. You keep, when you get discouraged, you keep learning how to get it off of you. You know, when, when uh, you just keep learning how to speak God's word over your life and, and the powerful name of Jesus and the most important, you learn how to walk in love. Because if you don't have love, you ain't got nothing. You can have all the faith in the world. You need the love, right? Yeah. And so you learn. And, but, you know, all through my life when I was in that battle with that kid, he was, he was rubbing my face in the snow and through my whole life, I never ceased, ceased being my father and mother's son. I was always their son. I was their son when I was nine years old, and I'm their son today at, at the age of 55. The only difference is I grew up into a, a man, and that's where we are. We're in the process of growing up spiritually, learning how to overcome adversity, learning that, that God is putting something in you every day, every day that you get into the Word, every day that you learn how to praise Him, and you be thankful and you'd be a great husband and a great wife and a great mother and a father and a great church member. All these things matter. God is putting a, 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 a design, your genetics, how about that? Your spiritual yeah. genetics is, is taking shape. And you're going to be a force to be reckoned with. I promise you that. Just don't let the devil um, sidetrack you. Yeah. I wanted to, um, in closing here on the message... One of my favorite passages in the Bible is, is Joshua chapter 1, and it's 5 through 9. I'm going to have Leslie read that, but as she does, let me just give you a little recap. The previous generation died in the wilderness. God parted the Red Sea for the Israelites. They went across, and then, and then they, through unbelief, they died in the wilderness. They, they, they couldn't go into the promised land. But the next generation went in, and two people from the next generation that were adults, uh, Joshua and Caleb, went in. And so God meets Joshua on the riverbank, and he's telling them, it's time to go get your land. It's time to go where the giants are. And when God comes on the scene, he teaches Joshua faith. He teaches him how to take his mind off of the problem and put it on the word of God and how to get strength from his God. Leslie's going to read that right now. Okay, Joshua 1 verse 5. No man shall be able to stand before you all the days of your life as I was with Moses, so I will be with you. I will not leave you nor forsake you. Be strong and of good courage, for to this people you shall divide as an inheritance the land which I swore to their fathers to give them. Only be strong and very courageous, that you may observe to do according to all the law which Moses, my servant, commanded you. Do not turn from it to the right hand or to the left, that you may prosper wherever you go. 
This book of the law shall not depart from your mouth, but you shall meditate in it day and night, that you may observe to do according to all that is written in it. For then you will make, make your way prosperous, and then you will have good success. Have I not commanded you? Be strong and of good courage. Do not be afraid, nor be dismayed, for the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. What a powerful scripture for overcoming adversity and, and, and reaching your promised land. Three times when God comes and talks to Joshua, three times he says, be strong and courageous. courageous. Be strong and courageous. Now we have to find out what he was saying to be, how we can be strong and courageous. He wasn't saying be strong and courageous and sit there all day and look at that river and try to figure out a natural way to get across that mm -hmm. river. No. Because the more you look at that river, the bigger it's going to get. God never told us to talk about our mountain or tell how big our mountain is. He told us to move it. Did he not yeah. speak to it? And so, but verse 8 is the key that holds it all together. Here is God teaching Joshua faith. He says this book of the law, which is the word of God, shall not depart from your mouth. Where's the word of God belong? In mm -hmm. your mouth. Now that doesn't mean that you tear up pages of the Bible and start eating it, right? <laughs> it means you read it. You read it preferably out loud because faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God, right? So you, you read it and you hear it and, and um, keep it in your mouth. Speak it. Keep speaking the word. He says, look at this. The word shall not, shall not. Someone say shall not. Shall not. All right. <laughs> shall not. Are you saying that shall not from home? Shall not depart from your mouth. I have a question for you. Why do you let it depart your mouth? When God said don't. Does he say every Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday you can take a break? Does he say we just only speak the word when, you, when, when you're in trouble? No. no. He said this word of God shall not depart from your mouth. Look what he says. But you shall meditate in it day and night. Meditate. You know what the word meditate means? It means meditate means to mutter, to read this word. By his stripes I am healed. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. No weapon formed against me will prosper. I have not been given a spirit of fear, but the spirit of power, love, and a sound mind. Greater is he that's in me than he that's in the world. You just that, that you just keep keep meditating and muttering and speaking to it. Look at this. You shall meditate in my word day and night. Uh-oh. Day and night. This will separate the casual Christian from the go ahead and let's get some mountains moved Christian. Yes. I'm telling you what, carnal Christianity is for the birds. You want a surefire way of, of being unhappy? Let your flesh rule you and do all natural things and forget the spiritual things. You will not be very happy. Trust me. And so it says meditate day and night. So that means all day when you get up in the morning and through the middle of the day and at nighttime, Meditate on the word. It doesn't mean go ahead and get up and read a 15-minute uh, uh, devotional. That's fine. I love devotionals. No. Meditate. You say, well, I work a job and I'm doing all this stuff and I can't take the Bible with me. That's why you get the Bible in your heart. And that's why you start saying it to yourself even while you're working and even while you're taking your lunch. And Because and, you know what? How many of you have been working and, and, and you, you found, time, found time to meditate on your problem? Uh-oh. <laughs> Someone might say, I'm, you're stepping on my toes, Pastor. Well, maybe. I hope, I hope sometimes toes need to be stepped on because I want, I want you to trust me that I'll tell you what you need to hear, not always what you want to hear because I've been there. We can always find time, it seems like, to meditate on the wrong things. But my Bible tells me if you want to get across the river, you want to get to your promised land, you want to do the impossibility, keep God's word in your mouth and meditate on it. Sister Lisa and I at work, what we like to do when we know that we have a prayer request, I've seen her do it and I do it too. We'll write the person's name down, put it on a post-it note, right smack in front of our keyboard. 
throughout the day we pray for that person. I think that's pretty cool. Yes. So, you know, even though you're at work, I mean, you get a break between a phone call or something and you just happen to look and see that name and just say, thank you, Lord, for healing their body or whatever the case may be that's going on. Thank you, Lord, for bringing peace into this person's heart right now in Jesus' name. I thank you, Lord, for doing the impossible in their life, you know? So that's, that's just what it is. It's just constantly, you know, just thinking about... The, the good things of God and just keep doing things that we know is pleasing to him because everybody needs somebody and we need to be praying for people and thinking about people and thinking about the harvest. You know what I mean? That's like such a big thing. And so you can't go wrong by doing that because that's God's will. That's his word. That's right. That's he right. Loves people. I love that. Uh, that is so right. I mean, this is part of growing up. Uh, spiritually. This and is... that's praying too. I mm -hmm, mean, mm -hmm. it doesn't have to be anything big and elaborate and big words. It's just like, thank you, Lord. You know, I know, Father, I can lift this person up to you and I know that you're working on behalf of them right now. And that's simple, easy prayers. We can all do it. It's just like talking to your best friend. You just got to practice it and you got to keep doing it. You got to keep doing it, you know, yep. and, and just be thankful when you're doing it. Because just knowing that all I have to do is lift it up to the Lord. He said we're two or three are gathered. He's there. So even if I'm sitting there at my desk alone, I know that he's there present with me too, you know. Yes. So. Yes, that's a good word. Yeah. That's a good word. And so this is a progression here. The book of the law shall not depart from your mouth, but you shall meditate in it day and night. And then it says that you may observe to do according to all that's written in it. So when you when you keep the word coming in your mouth and you meditate in it day and night, then you're going to start to do what the word says. And, and then you're getting somewhere. Yep. And that includes being obedient to the word. That includes walking in love when you feel like not walking in love. That includes the whole gamut here. That includes never repaying evil for evil. You start to grow spiritually. And so it's a progress here. And then it says that you may observe to do all that's written in it. Then look at this last part. Everybody wants this last part, but they don't want to do the first parts. <laughs> he says, for then you will make your way prosperous. And then you will have good success. And so who will make their way prosperous? prosperous. I will. You will. I will. You will. Yes. You will make your way prosperous. If you meditate day and night. Keep the word coming out of yep. your mouth and of doing what the word of God says. God told Joshua, you're going to prosper. Because when you're looking at that river and, and, and you say, you know what? I don't care how big that river looks. I don't care how impossible it looks. God told me to go over. God told me there was a promised land over there and we're going over. Yep. And he did separate that river and they did go over and they did defeat the giants. They would have never done that if they wouldn't have listened to what God's word said. And so there's an example of how to overcome adversity. We're all going to have adversity, but it's what you do in the middle of the trouble that really defines you and really develops you. You know, um, I believe that God is training leaders for this next wave here. I believe it's the last great move of the Holy Spirit. And I believe how we handle this adversity now will determine whether or not he's able to use us in this next great move. How you, enter, how you leave a stage in life will affect how you enter the next stage, right? So be faithful. Be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. And God will move you through the adversity. And I'll tell you what, you'll be a strong, strong leader. And Freedom in Christ Church will be blessed, blessed to have you. We're already blessed to have you. But we're going to be even more blessed because you're going to know who you are. Yes. And when you start praying and you start loving one another, you're going to come in there and you're going to see you're going to see me standing up there under behind the pulpit and you know what? You're already going to have love in your heart for me because you've prayed for me, you connected with me. And then that means my words will have impact. My words will have power because you can only receive from who you honor. 
And so, and I will love and respect you. And because I love you, because I've prayed for you and I've been there with you and I know what you're going through. You've been there for me and Leslie. My words will be full of passion, full of love. I, would, I will develop myself, study to show myself approved. It all works together. But together, Freedom in Christ Church, we're going to do a great work for the kingdom of God. Yes. I hope you enjoyed that. Um, before we sign off here, we do want to um, pray over the offerings. And um, we, we always do this, always, no, no matter what service it is, because it's so important to give by faith and to trust Lord, the Lord in our finances. And so 1 Corinthians 13, 13 says this, For by one spirit we are baptized into one body and have been made to drink into one spirit. For the body is not one member, but many. We have need of one another. God has placed every one of us in the body as, as it has pleased him. This shows us our importance in the body of Christ or freedom in Christ church. The Holy Spirit put me in there, put Leslie in there as it pleased the Father. We're designed and uniquely fit by God as a body to do the work. What a wonderful, wonderful plan God had to put us in the church, right? Yes. And to, and to and allow us to, to work off of one another's gifts. And I got gifts for you, Leslie got gifts for gifts for you, but you got gifts for us too. That's right. And so I just wanted to lead you in this way because um, this is how, a lot of times, because what Jesus said here in Matthew 6, he says, don't worry about the worldly things that the non-believers worry about. He said this, but seek first the kingdom of God and all these things will be added unto you. You know, that's a great verse. but That's the, a shirt I wore all day long. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. You, you know what, but the, but what the problem with this is, a lot of Christians don't even know what the, um, how, how to seek first the kingdom of God. Mm, yeah. And, and we're telling you, it's your church. It's taking care of your church. It's taking care of your family. It, it's taking care of, if you work for your employer, to work as if you're working unto the Lord. But it's all these things, these marriages and families and church, they're all God-ordained Units, sanctified, holy, which means separated for God's glory. That's why the devil fights it so much. And so we learn to invest in one another and invest in what God's called us to do in every way, in our finances and in our serving and in our prayers and in our love and in our commitment. I mean, we, we grow together as a body too. Yeah. And as we do, we are powerful we bring out so much of an aroma of love and faith that when people come into our midst, they, they feel that tangible presence of love and that tangible presence of the Holy Spirit and the power of God is there to deliver them. Yeah. That's all God's plan. And giving is one way to make sure that we stay connected in there and it's a way to trust God in our finances. Trust me, I do not want to put my trust in the world's finances. Leslie and I are tithe payers. And I can look out there at the world and I can look at an uncertainty and I guarantee you, we have promises that God's gonna take care of us. Yep. And so we don't have to worry about those things. And as we keep taking care of his house, he takes care of our house. One of my favorite scriptures, Leslie's gonna read about the tithe. Malachi 3.10, bring all the tithes into the storehouse that there may be food in my house. And try me now in this, says the Lord of hosts, if I will not open for you the windows of heaven and pour out for you such a blessing that there will not be enough room, room enough to receive it. And I will rebuke the devourer. That's my favorite part. And I will rebuke the devourer for your sakes so that he will not destroy the fruit of your ground, nor shall the vine fail to bear fruit for you in the field, says the Lord of hosts. And all the nations will call you blessed, for you shall be a delightful land, says the Lord of hosts. Never, never let the devil get you in fear. That's right. And to hunker down and to draw back. Whenever the devil tries to mess with my head about any kind of giving, I'll give 
more. Because <laughs> I know you can't outgive God. And, and so we have precious promises from God that as we take care of his house, he's taking care of ours. And so, Leslie, do you want to read them? The this? church will continue to be open every single day right now. Um, you can walk in for prayer. Um, you can have the opportunity to honor the Lord with your tithes and offerings if you'd like. So we open the church up every morning at 8 a.m. And it's closed every evening at 7. Um, if you would like to mail in your tithes and offerings, it's 4042 Sycamore Grove Road, Chambersburg, 17202. Or you could um, send in your um, tithes and offerings through PayPal. And you just go to Freedom in Christ Church at yahoo.com. And you just choose the friends and family um, option. That way, nobody gets charged any extra fees. Yes. Yes, so that's a good way to do it. Yeah. That's a good way to do it. Um, I want to just say a couple more scriptures, and then we're going to pray, and then we're going to um, um, uh, call it a night as far as this service goes. But these, this has been in my heart. It's been in my heart for a while. Proverbs 6.31 says, If the thief is caught, Okay, well, who's the thief? Satan. Yes. In John 10.10, 10, Jesus, yes. Jesus identified him. He said, it's the thief that comes to steal, kill, and destroy. Yep. I have come that you might have life and have it more abundantly. So if the thief is caught, he must pay back seven times what he has stole, even if he has to sell everything in his household. So Satan's the thief. And we're claiming and believing that out of his kingdom... Seven times over what he's stolen from us as the individuals and what he's stolen from us as a church, he has to repay it seven times over. It can be in your health, your yeah, finances, anything. any area. Your peace that, of mind? Yes. You can claim it all. I mean, it all has to be restored to you in your marriage. Yeah. Don't let the thief get away with it. That's right. Amen. And then it says... And you can stand on these scriptures, too. Yeah. That was Proverbs 6.31. Yes. If you want to write that down. And Proverbs 6.31. I, I know a man that, that had a house, a rental house, a man and a woman, and um, the people that rented it tore it up. Mm. They just tore it up and had all these cats in there that weren't treated right, and I don't want to go gory, gory with the details, but it was pretty bad. Ruined it. He was so upset. You know what he did? He came into my office one day and he said, where is that scripture that says yeah. Satan has to pay it back seven times? Where is that scripture? And so I said, I don't know yet. I don't know quite yet, but I'll, I'll, I'll find it. And I did some research and he came back in my office and <coughs> said, I found it. I found it. And you know what? God blessed him with a beautiful home with, with a tremendous amount of acreage and the price that he got it for that was owned by two ladies that just wanted to get out of it. And he literally just, he, he says, I just, it's just overwhelming what we got this property for. It was way under market value, way under. And then God, more, more than seven times out of mm -hmm. Satan's kingdom, it That's came right. back. So you stand on that scripture. Yep. And then also Proverbs 13, 22 says a good man or a good person leaves an inheritance to his children's children. And the wealth of the sinner or the wealth of Satan's kingdom is laid up for the just. There is a transfer of wealth and resources that's taking place right now mm, yeah, out of Satan's yes. kingdom into the church. Mm -hmm. Right now, out of his kingdom, there's a transfer of wealth, not so that we can consume it upon our lust, not so that we can all buy new cars with it, nothing against new cars, <laughs> but it's coming so that we can complete and fulfill the mission that God has called us to do. That's awesome. We're getting a building. Yes, we are. It's coming. And soon, Brother George and Sister Lisa is going to be telling, telling, telling us about it. And also, real quick, I want to give a shout out to my brother, George Coke Jr., yes. uh, Businessman of the Year. Amen. And we're very proud of him. <laughs> and so, um, he's got the giftings. Now, I hope he's not mad at me because he's pretty humble, but that's all right. <laughs> he'll get over it. But uh, congratulations to him. Yes. We're proud of him. That's we are awesome. so proud of him. But I, I tell you, there's a, there's a transfer coming. You know what the devil, he talks to me. 
See, my thing is I don't listen to him. And you know what he says? Well, look at this stuff going on out there right now. Mm -hmm. You're not even in the church right now. Mm -hmm. and, and, and look at all this stuff. You don't know what's going to happen out there. You don't know. Look at who they're trying to say the president is. All this stuff. Yakety yak, yakety yak, mm -hmm. yakety yak. That's right. I say, get behind me, Satan. My God never fails. I'm a tither. This church is called by God, and who God calls, he equips. And everyone who hooks up with this church will partake in the same blessing. That's being on the offense, not the defense. Yep. yep. Woo! <laughs> yep. You want to know, if you look up buzzkill in the dictionary, <laughs> you're going to see a picture of Satan. That's right. Don't let him steal your joy. <laughs> we are the victors. Yes. We are the overcomers. We try. Ha, 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 ha. We rejoice in the Lord. Yes. Always. And again, we say rejoice. This joy that we have, the world didn't give it to us. So how in the world can it take it away? Amen. Our substance comes from a place much deeper than the shallowness of this world. Our supply is God. Well, I pray that this has blessed you. We love you. We love yes. you all very yes. much. And we'll be reaching out and calling you in, in tomorrow's Thanksgiving and um, just uh, keeping in touch. But we want you to know that we do love you. And um, Leslie, you want to close us out in prayer? Have a very, very blessed Thanksgiving. Yes. Enjoy your families. Yes, yes. Okay, Father, we come to you in the name of Jesus. And Lord, I thank you, Father God, for this hour or so to be together with our church family, Father God. Lord, I just thank you for healing our bodies, each and every one out there that may not be feeling good, Father God. I just thank you right now in Jesus' mighty name that your healing power yes. is going through yes. right, right now, now and touching right now. every single body. Jesus name. Right now. I thank you, Father God, that the enemy has been called out in the name of Jesus, and he's got to bow. Sickness has to bow to the mighty name of Jesus. Yes. And I thank you, Father God, for just that healing taking place. And I thank you, Lord God, for just blessing our Freedom in Christ Church family. Father God, they are so loving and so kind, Father God. And I thank you for blessing them abundantly above all they could ever ask, think, or imagine, Heavenly Father. And I thank you, Lord God, that together we are marching on in the army of the Lord yes. together, yes. Father God. And we will continue to rise up in faith and speak your word, Father God. It doesn't matter what we see going on all around us, Father God, because we know, Father God, that your words are true. And, and you are such... You are such a powerful God, Heavenly Father, and I just thank you, Lord God, that we can speak those power words, and we can call things that are not as though they are in Jesus' mighty name, and we thank you for it now in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Yeah. And remember what Leslie said, go on the offensive. Yes. And remember, we love you, Freedom in Christ Church. We love we you do. with all of our heart. God bless you. Bye.